Hello, and welcome to the sixth episode of Let's Learn Blades in the Dark. In this episode, we will talk about resistance, armor, and death. So the resistance role is something we've discussed a little bit in the past, but uh, here we'll get into it in detail. The resistance role can be activated in response to any consequence. So typically consequences follow from action roles and then you can make resistance roles against those consequences. The attribute you use for the resistance role, so with XD6, the attribute that fills in X uh, is as follows. It's based on the consequence that activates it. So in the case of consequences that arise from deception or understanding, so if you're being tricked or if you uh, are uh, perhaps uh, encountering some new information that is uh, difficult to understand, then uh, maybe you are rolling insight. Uh, that is the attribute you use in the XD6 on your resistance roll. In the case of consequences from physical strain or injury, uh, which are you know much more straightforward, um, then you are going to use prowess. And in the case of consequences from mental strain or willpower, then you're going to use resolve. And this functions kind of like a steel test in Burning Wheel. Um, basically, if you are shocked or overcome or, uh, you know, somehow uh, exhausted or you need to concentrate a great deal uh, from some kind of mental phenomenon like, uh, you know, seeing something terrible or hearing something terrible or something like that, uh, then you're going to use resolve for your resistance roll. Uh, so continuing the resistance roll, um, the mechanic that the resistance roll uses is as follows. Uh, so the PC takes six stress minus the highest die result. Uh, so you're rolling XD6, where X is the attribute that has been selected based on the consequence. And then you take six stress and subtract the highest die result. If you get two sixes, so you get a crit, then you clear one stress instead of uh, adding stress, right? So um, say you roll a six on a resistance roll, then your PC will resist and take zero stress. But if you get two sixes, you crit and you actually subtract one stress or clear one stress instead. So a resistance roll typically reduces the severity of the consequence by one degree, but it can be more according to the GM's choice to the point of total negation. So the simplest uh, cases here to try to understand what this means are either action clocks or harm. So in the case of harm, let's say you are taking level two harm and you make a resistance roll then typically you will reduce that down to uh, level one harm, right? So that's pretty simple. Uh, however, the GM has discretion here to make the resistance more effective. So you're taking level two harm, you make the resistance roll, the GM can actually say, oh, you know what? Um, you're so effective at doing this that you don't take any harm at all, right? That's up to the GM's discretion. And the point of that is that it allows the GM to help uh, set the tone of the game. So once again, you can have a game that is more sort of swashbuckling and action oriented, or you can have a game that is more grimdark and uh, has harsher consequences. Uh, that is something you can set uh, by adjusting the effectiveness of resistance rolls. So only one resistance roll can be used against a given consequence. What that means is, let's say, as in the previous example, the consequence is level two harm. You make a resistance roll, it gets knocked down to level one harm. You cannot, as a player, choose to make another resistance roll against that consequence to try to knock it down to zero harm, right? So the reason for this, if you think about it, is that 
on the resistance roll, the GM has discretion of how effective the resistance is. Therefore, there's no need to do multiple resistance rolls because the GM has a chance to think about how effective they want that resistance to be in the context of the situation and the tone of the game. They make that judgment call. They call for how effective the resistance roll is, and then that's done, right? It, both uh, the player and the GM have been able to contribute to the decision making and the discussion about the situation. And uh, since that conversation has taken place, there's no need to revisit it. If there are multiple consequences, and I apologize, but in the video on consequences, I was not uh, very clear on this point. Uh, the GM, when assigning consequences, can choose to assign one consequence or multiple consequences. So for example, instead of the uh, player character simply taking harm, uh, let's say, you know, as per the previous example, it was two harm, the GM could decide, I'm going to give you level one harm, and I'm also going to tick an action clock, right? So those are two separate consequences. In this case, the PC or the player can choose to resist each consequence individually. So one resistance roll for the action clock and another resistance roll for the harm. Okay, so each individual consequence can only be resisted once, but if there are multiple consequences at the same time, each one can have a resistance role assigned to it, and you take stress, or the player character takes stress according to each individual role. So say on one of them, the player rolls a four, and on the other one, the player rolls a two, then they're going to take a total of six stress, right? So six minus four is two, uh, six minus two is four, totals up to six. So that's how that works. It's up to the player to decide. They have discretion. They can resist one, they can resist both, or they can resist none at all. It's up to them and their evaluation of how much stress they have and what they want to do with the situation. Again, it's a conversation. So once the player rolls dice, they must accept the amount of stress they take. Basically, uh, you roll the dice, you accept the result. It's the same as what we saw with the action roll. Uh, you cannot say, oh, I took too much stress from that resistance roll. I want to go back on it. You can't do that. And this means that the resistance roll has real stakes to it, and it keeps things exciting. All right, so moving on to armor. Like with the resistance roll, the degree of a consequence can be reduced by the value of armor. Of course, this has to be something that makes sense in the fiction, but if you're thinking about something like harm, then uh, obviously armor can reduce harm. Uh, and so uh, if you were taking uh, two degrees of harm and you had armor with a value of two, then you could choose to check off your arm, both of your armor boxes in order to negate that without having to make any resistance roll. So you incur no stress you soak that damage with your armor. Once armor boxes have been marked as used, they can't be restored until the crew chooses their load for the next score. So once you choose your load for the next score, which is something we'll get into in a subsequent video, uh, your items, your armor are refreshed, essentially. And finally, let's talk about death. So there are two triggers for PC death in Blades in the Dark. The first is taking level four fatal harm without resisting. So you always have the choice to try to make a resistance roll to knock that down to uh, level um, three harm, or actually lower according to the GM's discretion. 
or taking level three harm when level three is already filled. So you'll remember from our discussion of harm, there's those uh, level one, level two, level three, and at level three, there's just one box to fill in. So if you have one level three harm in there already, and you take another one, then that's gonna bump it up to level four, which is a level that is potentially fatal, right? So the GM can decide whether this catastrophic consequence is fatal or not. And the PC, or the player I should say, always has the option of resisting the consequence. That um, is applicable in both cases. But as far as it goes, if nobody says otherwise, these are the conditions where your player character will die. And so upon death, the player can create a new PC from scratch or from an existing NPC. So, you know, they can create a completely new character who joins the crew, or uh, they can grab an NPC who's somehow affiliated to the crew and say, I want to play that character and start with them. Both work. Alternatively, the PC can be transferred to the ghost playbook with later opportunities to become a hull or vampire. So your player character can become undead and you can explore that aspect of the game as well. That's um, up to the player to decide. And you know, the GM of course will have input on this as well. All right, so in the next episode, uh, we are going to talk about stress and trauma. And I will see you then.